Looking good. I like your glasses. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to kind of walk through the manual and then show you a, little, a few additional things and resources. Um, it's like 22 pages, so I won't go through everything. Um, just point out the most important thing. So um, let's just start with your basic responsibilities. So I think you all filled out the registration form. A lot of you did the background check. You should have received the background check in your email. And if you didn't see it, um, I would check your junk mail folder as it goes there. And you are currently doing the third one, attend volunteer training. And I will we'll go over a lot today, but it's not going to be everything you might possibly need for the specific student you get. So I'll try to at least point out some of the resources I like and where you can find stuff, but just always know if you need support, if you do have a student, um, you can always come to me and ask more questions because we can't do everything today. Okay, so once you do these three things, and I think I emailed a lot of you the waiting list and a few of you emailed back. So uh, once you do this training and have the background check done, then we can match you with the students. So Sometimes I'll do like I did the yesterday. I'll just send all the open volunteers the waiting list and then you can get back to me with who might work for you in your schedule. And sometimes I'll just reach out to you with a specific student and see if that works for you. So if, if you agree and your student also thinks it's good, then I give you the volunteer, the student's contact info. So I'll give you there phone number and your email. And I suggest texting and emailing <laughs> and then maybe calling. A lot of people don't answer because, I mean, a lot of people don't answer their phone these days, but um, especially if they think they're going to have to speak in English. So mm -hmm. texting can be a little lower stress form of communication. So you can reach out to them and then you to decide when you want to meet. So your students do a similar thing you did. So you filled out like every week what times you are free, you are available. And then the expectation is you meet at least an hour per week. Sometimes an hour and a half is just, but I mean, you can get more in in that. But um, we tell students when they sign up, an hour a week. So. You know, if you say you're free Monday, Tuesday, Thursday evening, you're not going to meet with them all those days. It'll just be once a week. And they might try to tuck you into more times. Um, and that's up to you. <laughs> it's totally fine to say you can only do it once a week. Okay, so you'll decide, like, OK, we're going to do Tuesday at 5. Um, and then, you know, if you're meeting in person in the library, you can meet at Bemis Library. You can meet really in any public place. So like if you're both in Denver and there's a more convenient spot, that's fine. Just no private homes. And then if it is your first meeting, sometimes it helps to send like a picture of yourself or describe really well where you're going to be. Sometimes there's just people wandering around the library and they can't find each other because <laughs> they don't know what to look for. <laughs> And then if you're doing Zoom, let me know if you need help like setting up a meeting or if you need help, uh, if your student needs support getting on the meeting. Most people, if they agree to online tutoring, they're, they're pretty good already. They know what they're getting into. So. Okay, so it's best, yeah, decide on a regular time and place to meet. Try to stick to that and then if you need to change one week, just work that out together. Um, but if it's something where someone has a totally new schedule, and they got a job or something, and it's not going to work, then definitely let me know. Because I probably need to rematch you. And then just be aware that people have different cultures in terms of um, time and schedules and response time. So try to give people a couple chances, but if they're really not respecting your time or they're not 
communicating with you, uh, then let me know. Don't let don't let it go on and on because probably that person is not really ready to commit to your session. So we'd rather have you work with someone who is. Okay, and then you'll need to keep track of your hours you volunteer. So the hours you spend with your student and how much time you spend planning. So I'll send you an email at the end of every month. You just fill, fill out that form. Any questions so far? Okay. So I won't go too much into adult learners, but um, we're all adult learners, right? So you know how it is. We're all busy and things come up and we have specific goals. So the more you get to know your student, get to know their maybe what kind of job they have, if they have kids or not, what are their immediate goals. Um, just try to connect your language instruction to either their interests or what's happening right now in their life. And then just, you know, be compassionate. Um, things come up or they probably have a lot of gaps in their English understanding and knowledge. They probably feel a bit insecure about um, practicing their English. Read into more of this on your own. All right, learning styles and preferences. You've probably heard about these. The auditory, visual, kinesthetic. Does anyone know their own learning preference? I might be more of an auditory learner. Auditory. <laughs> so you can hear stuff and remember it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm visual. Like I don't remember new words and stuff until I see it written. Anybody kinesthetic, you think? I think I'm a visual learner as well. You're also visual. I learned. By Go using ahead. manipulatives and tactile items too. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like we're we learn, we all learn through all of these ways, right? Um, we might be stronger on maybe one. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind we tend to teach towards our own learning preference. So like if you are an auditory learner, you might tend to like talk a lot and <laughs> not be the best for your students. So the best thing is to is to hit all of these. Okay, we'll go more into that, but for language learning, like the more different ways you can present the language. Um, so having them do stuff with their hands, look at stuff, see stuff, hear stuff, um, it's gonna stick more, right? If they're experiencing the language mm -hmm. different ways. All right, and then developing a lesson plan. Okay, so your first meeting, don't stress about having a perfect, beautiful lesson plan because you don't know each other and you probably don't know your students' level. So that first time you can, you know, get to know each other and talk about long-term goals. And probably when you ask them their long-term goals, they're gonna be like, let's speak better English, uh, but try to get them to focus on something measurable and attainable. And by long term, like maybe like three months. So it's something that you can actually accomplish. Um, so it is long term, but not like just up in the sky. So for example, maybe they wanna be able to communicate orally with salespeople, neighbors and over the phone. Okay, so this might be like a beginner, someone maybe they haven't been here too long. This would be, perhaps one of your first goals. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back to this, but just so you know, um, on page eight, there's this goals worksheet. So this is nice to do on that first meeting. Mm -hmm. 
So it kind of goes through like, which of these reasons are your motivation for um, having a tutor for improving your English? Okay. Also a nice way for you to get to know them and what motivates them. Mm -hmm. Nice, you have that. Okay, so we have our long-term goals and then learning objectives, it's like your goal for the week, your goal for that one session. Um, so for example, maybe you're meeting today on Thursday and your learning objective is that your student can use numbers zero through 100 and some of these, this money vocabulary. Okay, so I think that's, depending on their level, like, that's probably attainable in an hour, hour and a half, because they'll be able to do this. And it is good practice to share with your student the learning objective. Some people are fine, just like whatever's going to happen is cool, but some people really need like to know where they're going and like what the goal is, and they really appreciate that. And I'll show you, like, if you're using the intercambio books, for example, these are embedded in the lessons. So, especially if you're new to English teaching, that's nice. You can just kind of follow along. And the lessons have certain objectives and they build off one another. Okay, and then review. So, review is kind of a nice way to start your lesson, too, because we don't want to teach something once and then never go back to it. So it could be just so simple. Maybe it's like a five minute little activity just to get their brains working. Um, it gives them something they should already know so that it's kind of a boost of confidence. And it also for you as the teacher, it, it's like kind of an assessment so you can see if they remember and understand what you did previously or if you need to maybe spend more time on that. And it could be really simple, you know, like, um, it could just be a prompt, like, what stores did you visit this past week? Okay, so if last week you learned names of different stores, you could have them apply that and talk about their own life. And it could be a writing thing, it could be a, you know, tactile activity. All right, and then moving to, so presenting new concepts. Okay, so this is huge, model or demonstrate. <laughs> um, and the more you can model it, demonstrate it, give them examples, um, use visuals, talk, you know, introduce relevant vocabulary. Realia is just the fancy word for like real objects. So say you're learning like kitchen vocabulary. You know, maybe you have, even if, in, if you're on Zoom, like you have actually like forks and knives and a toaster, like things um, that are real, that make it real. I've seen people in the library bring a whole like table set in, like a placemat mm -hmm. and glass. <laughs> for yeah. Pictures, I mean, you can find any kind of picture out there these days. Okay. Let's see, what is my down here? Okay, so saying, so these are all kind of like pretending you have the same beginner student. And so their new concept, you're saying the numbers, your students repeating them, um, discuss the student's experience, and talking about prices. You know, you could do flashcards, you could do videos. So try to demonstrate it and present the new language in a few different ways. Erica, I'm, I just have a quick question. I don't mean to interrupt or if this is not the right time to ask. The intercambio books, are they, is this a pretty prescribed situation where we use the intercambio books or are they just a, a, another learning tool? Yeah, you can use any learning tool that you think is appropriate. Um, I'll show you ones I like, but yeah, I mean, I encourage you to supplement 
So like if you are going to use Intercompio, there's also other books or you can do projects. Um, you know, you don't just have to walk through a textbook. Okay. Yeah. But no, it's pretty, it's definitely self-directed. So <laughs> there's okay. not like a set curriculum we have where okay. you start at point A and get to point B. So. Okay, and then so you've presented the new concept, given them tons of examples, and then guided practice would be the next step. So that's kind of like you're holding your hand, going through using that new language. Um, you definitely you don't want to just be like, this is how past tense verbs work. Okay, you do it. <laughs> um, so you want to give them lots of examples, and then you want to while they're there, you know, work through some stuff together. It could be, there's infinite number of things you could do with that. Okay, and then some example here. Okay, so look through a catalog, talk about prices, or maybe you say some numbers and your student listens and writes them. So some practice. And then independent practice, stuff they're doing on their own. Um, so this example, maybe they write about their shopping experiences during the week, so that they're doing at home, talking about what they bought, how much it costs. And then assessment is huge, and I think a lot of people think it's just like a test, like a big test, uh, but really it's any way your student shows they understand. Okay, so if you ask, do you understand, is that an assessment? Yeah, it's kind of shaking your head. <laughs> no, asking do you understand does not count as an assessment. Because <laughs> um, of course they're gonna say yes and they're not showing you anything. Um, so make them show you. And it could be, here I have an example of a dictation. Um, you could have them record themselves, talking about prices. I mean, everyone has a recording device on their phone. Um, if you say you did do like past tense verbs, maybe you maybe it's just a prompt you just say, what did you do last week? And then you're listening. So it is an assessment because you're checking if they're using those past tense verbs or not. So there's a lot of things you could do, but just keep in mind, like, are they showing you their understanding? Mm -hmm. All right, so that was kind of a lot, but that's lesson planning. In a nutshell, and here's a little template you can use if you want, it's up to you. It is kind of nice just to keep track of all the different parts you want to have in the lesson. Okay, and then DSL materials. Okay, so Lore, is it Lore? Lore, right? Lore, Lore. yeah, mm -hmm. mentioned the Intercompio books. So this is a nonprofit out of Boulder. They make these books. We do have the new copies here. We also have the old copies. So it's a little confusing, but there's an intro level and then there's levels one through five. And for levels one through five, there's two books for each level. So there's a left and a right. And they say you can begin with either. So you can start with right, you can start with left. Um, they are at the same level. So. so are these, can we pick these up? Are they available to us? Yep, we have hard copies here at the library. Okay. Um, if you go, if you're familiar with Venus, you go in the library to the right. And at the bottom of the stairs, you'll see our bookshelf. Okay. Um, and there's, so for each level, there's a student book and there's a teacher book. Okay. And I'll, show you, I'll come back. Sorry. I, um, is there a PDF for these books? Um, there's this. So if you go to page 22, uh, some people have been able to access this. Well, this one person had the issue. Come on, I want to go. Okay, here it goes. 
Okay, so you can go to the link, enter. Okay. So I gave you the username. It's immigrants one, so you know the first letter is not an L. Okay, so this is called issues. So we have purchased them here. So you should be able to get in. And I don't know why they're not in order, but they're not. <laughs> so it's like mm -hmm. book four, right, is here, book one. So let's say you're doing, I don't know, maybe you're on book two. So we have book two, the left and the right, and it says student. Luckily, they're color coded. So then you can see the teacher books are here too. So just to show you, looks like, so the teacher book is basically is the student book, but then it has like teaching notes around it. Um, if I were teaching online, I mean, students can also purchase the book. I think they're 10 or 12 dollars. If they want a copy, they can buy it online. Um, Explain again what left or right, what was different? So like each level, like level two, will have a left and a right, but you can start with either one. So they're just separate books, but the same level. So if your student's at level two, you could go through both the left and the right book. I know it's kind of weird. Yeah, it just seems odd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric. Another question. Are, you said yeah, the books are available at the library. Are they? Um, what's the word I want? Can we use? Can people write in them? The students can write no, in. No, not our books because they're they're the library books. Um, so they're not disposable books. Yeah. So if they really want a book to write in, they can order one. I see. Audio. I see. Okay. Yeah. Since we're talking about intercom view, so right below this, where you can get the books. So if you get a student and you're not sure, maybe you want to use the intercom view, but you don't know which level to start with, mm -hmm. uh, you can open this. There's a lot of mumbo jumbo. But go down to nice. page whatever page this is. Um, so definitely, I would do this speaking test with them. Mm -hmm. You can see this are pretty easy. Like, my name is Erica. What is your name? Um, I make sure. So I just remind them to answer in full sentences. They can ask you to repeat if they need. And then you have your scoring here. So you give them a two if they understood and they answered in a complete sentence and use the correct grammar. Okay, one if they understood the question, but it was the incorrect grammar or incomplete, incorrect grammar basically. And zero if they didn't understand or they could have an answer. Um, so maybe you get to like number five, how was the weather today? So I does not compute, then zero. But maybe you do like um, like seven. What are we doing right now? So maybe they say you test me. So what would you give them for a score? One. one. Yeah, you give them a one. Yeah, because they understood and they answered. But you're checking for the verb with ing, which if they didn't do. You give them a one. So as long as they're um, generally understanding. I just keep going with the test. If there's a few that in a row where they just don't understand, then I, I'll stop the test. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you add up their points. So if they got like a 17, you could try starting with level three. And the combo of books. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then if you start with a level of a book and it's too easy or too hard, you're welcome to move up or down. So this is just, starting point for you. And then on the next page is a little, I don't know, reading more of a grammar test. So 
So if you have time, or they could do this on their own too, and you could score it. Where's the one made it a lot longer? The answer is ah, here it is. It's above. Okay. So this can be telling because sometimes like their reading score is a lot higher than their speaking mm -hmm. or vice versa. So they might be at like a level five in reading and like level three in speaking listening. Oh pretty common. If if they can't okay, if they can't write in the books, then um, these little placement tests, can we copy them so that they can do the yeah, yeah. Um, this is a this is just online. This test. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you could print it out. There's also copies at the library. So on the same bookshelf with the intercambio books, there's a green folder. Okay. There's copies of this test. And can we copy the intercambio books if you know if we're teaching a lesson, you know, from there? Can we just take the book? Is it copyrighted? In other words. Can we copy the page or the page? It is, but oh. I make copies of books all the time. So. I was say, who, who will notice? As long as you're not like, putting it on the internet and being like, this is Laura's <laughs> <laughs> intellectual property. Right. No, it is just for your students. So you want them to write, like, yeah. that's the kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So we'll come back to this. We were talking about materials. Okay, so that's the intercambio. Okay, and this isn't all their materials. These are just some of my favorites. Um, I also encourage you, even before you have a student, to check out intercambio's website. Okay, anyway, they have some really good little short videos uh, just about, especially teaching adults language. Mm -hmm. are helpful. Okay, and then Oxford Picture Dictionaries. I guess we only have these for in-person people. We don't have like a PDF of this. I'm not sure if it's out there. Like, you could probably find it on the internet. If you try, let me know if you find it. <laughs> They're really good. Um, I don't have one right here to show you, but it's like anything from clothes to weather to childcare to working in a restaurant, like Mm -hmm. A lot of vocabulary. Um, just really, like sometimes in my class, they just we open to a page that relates to what we're doing and just talk about the different words and the pictures. And you have those in the library. Yep, yeah, we have these. There should be enough copies to check out too. Nice. And then another resource I like um, is Azar. These are pretty old books, but really good. So there's a lot of just really clear explanations um, of grammar and then some good practice. So I wouldn't go through it like page to page, but like maybe your student needs to learn how to use verbs with ing and then you can open to that lesson. Um, I make copies of this for my class. And it's good practice in there. And then just a few more to highlight. So what's next? series this is designed for adults who do not read especially if they don't even read in their own language which we do have we have had some of those kinds of students um so this kind of like there's five or six different levels so it starts with sight words and words with short a so like man can but there's stories about like an adult immigrant so they're not like little kiddish. Mm -hmm. If that happens to be your student, I can show you more about how to use these. But even if they're if they're like beginner and you just want you think they need more reading practice, I think these are good too. Okay, and then true stories. These are at a bunch of different levels. They're different real articles. Um, again, like the intercambio books don't have a lot of extensive reading, and like some of the other textbooks, they don't either. So. This is an option if you want to do a bit more reading. And then Pop Story mm -hmm. is a great series. I'd say like high beginner to intermediate. Um, and there's three different levels and it goes through stories about navigating the US healthcare system and all of the fun words 
that come along with that and concepts right so um these are really good for a lot of people and then this is similar but uh, it's about school-aged children so especially if your student has school-aged kids these stories deal with uh, the american school system and stuff like student teacher conferences and mm. walkers <laughs> that's nice yeah. okay like i said we have more more stuff so if you're not finding what you need um, feel free to come in. any questions currently Okay, sorry, I wanted to have a nice PowerPoint for you guys, but I don't. <laughs> no, this is great. I'll just yap at you. Um, okay, and the last thing I really want to go over is these seven tips. They're important. Okay, so keep it relevant. What do you guys think that means? Keep it relevant. I think it would be meaningful to the student itself, whatever it is that they're needing from mm -hmm. this. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, whatever they're needing, whatever interests them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if they just got here and they're job searching, you know, you don't need to be talking about marine biology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's not even their level and it's not what they need right now. Yeah. Yeah, so keep it relevant. And also, the more they're interested in, the more it affects their life, the more they're going to pay attention. And sure. Like for them. Yes. Um, oh, I didn't really get into this. Okay, so recognition first, then production. That kind of goes back to we're talking about lesson planning and when you're presenting the concepts, you're showing them and they're hearing it, you're telling them in lots of different ways. So the skill of recognition, so like reading listening, those skills are going to come first. And then producing the language is like a higher level skill. So I think of, you know, when babies, uh, before they're able to talk, they can understand like, a lot of language. Mm -hmm. So we're the same way as language learners. We're able to recognize a lot before we're able to produce it. Uh, so that's why we want to give them lots and lots of input. In ESL, we call it input. Uh, so that's Again, showing them the language, demonstrating it, examples, visuals, and give them a lot of that before you ask them to produce the language. And just keep in mind those skills like speaking and writing, those are going to be more difficult and just a higher level. So we want to just make sure they get a lot of input before they're creating output. Okay, and then limit your Spanish or other foreign language. Why would you want to do that? Well, you they want to learn English, not their own native language. They already know that one. So yeah, they're there to use yeah. to learn English. Yes. The more you converse with them in English, the more they will get out of the class. Any other reasons? I, I do appreciate, I think that's very important. I, I do think it's kind of nice to have a rapport, a small rapport that's comfortable in Spanish if if that's possible. And then to get into the lesson and, and try and get, I mean, just the way you've said it is, is good. Yeah. Yep, so yeah, I think it's fine if you, Maybe you do speak their same language and you do want to build rapport, just ask them how they are and get them comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. But if you need to have a rule where like, now we are starting English. <laughs> <It's> English <only. laughs> right, right. Um, and it's easy for them to use it as a crutch or like to start directly translating. But if you have English as a rule, then like you could easily translate something to their language, but think how much more they're learning if they have to like sure, talk sure. around something, or if you're going to talk in English around the word to describe it, they're getting that much more practice, either listening or trying to explain what they're trying to say in English. 
So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then be aware of your teacher talk to student talk ratio. <laughs> Who do you think should be talking more? What did you say? Who should be talking more, the teacher or the student? The student. I think it depends also on the level of the student. At the beginning level, um, probably the teacher um, has to speak more. Mm -hmm. Because as we uh, we talked about like first recognition and then production, so probably at the beginning. Yeah, and they just won't have a lot of language <laughs> to talk with. Right. Um, yeah, and if they are that beginner, Make sure you're limiting your language too. So speaking slowly and using really uh, simple language. But yeah, you're right. If like as they're if they're intermediate or advanced, then the ratio, then they should be talking even more, right? Right. Right. And then I just remember wait time. So wait time in teaching is you ask a question. And it feels really awkward, but you need to wait because that your student is processing your question in a different language, and then they need extra time to process their answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make sure you don't don't ask something, and then if there's like an awkward silence, jump in again because they just need extra time, and it's gonna it feels unnatural. It's definitely weird. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you need to count in your head, you know, 10, 15 seconds, then do that. So. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It takes practice. <laughs> yeah, I still feel weird about it in my class, even with my beginners. I ask something and then it's like crickets. And you just like hang out. And then finally, someone will say something. Mm -hmm. from there. Okay, and we talked about structuring your lesson. Um, so you don't have to do the exact structure, you know, any certain structure, but it's kind of nice to have a structure so your student knows what to expect. Each mm -hmm. Okay, and then make corrections wisely. Do you think you should correct every mistake you hear or see? Tiara is shaking your head. What's that, Tiara? Um, I think it says here too, like that you should give them a chance to self-correct instead of just jumping in and providing the answer every single time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So give them a chance to self-correct. Also, uh, people are already feeling vulnerable. <laughs> so um, you just want to make sure they feel comfortable mm -hmm. making mistakes because it's totally fine. They're going to make mistakes. If they're learning a new thing, right? And I say a lot of people come from an English learning background where it is very strict and like they're not supposed to make mistakes. So. I think getting away from that and pushing, you want them to speak fluently, like fluidly, not perfectly. So you'd rather if people are speaking fluidly and they're not stopping thinking about the grammar and starting. Um, we don't want that either. And you've heard of the affective filter. So if you don't feel safe in a space, then you have a filter that goes up in your brain. And you're not gonna learn anything new. Mm -hmm. You're in like a a tense state. So the more comfortable they feel better. But of course, you know, if they're you know, as they're speaking, if you notice they keep making a mistake or it's impeding your understanding or like how comprehensible they are, then um, you could definitely talk about that one error and kind of turn it into a mini, mini lesson. So, right, you can make corrections, but wisely. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then we talked about check for understanding. I'm gonna check for your understanding. What does check for understanding mean? Mm -hmm. Is asking, do you understand a check for understanding? No. That's a no-no you told us. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the word. So have your students say or do something to show you they're under showing you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, and then the rest of this you guys can peruse in your own time. So there's just a lot of ideas. So teaching vocabulary, ideas, listening, practice ideas, speaking. Um, and then there's this little section a lot of people have questions about finance stuff, taxes stuff, and work stuff. Um, so there's just some resources here. I wish we had like a career center to help people with yeah. that. Um, field trips for people, meeting in person, um, what do you learn about that? Um, we do have a few iPads here at the library, you're welcome to check out, they're up at the main desk. Um, these are just a few of the apps on there. Um, you're welcome to check it out and use it at the library. Um, if you're interested in that, I would just check one out and Kind of explore the apps, see if you like any of them. I sure wish I had this nine years ago in Chicago. Oh yeah, these are great. Yeah, it was it was really tough. This oh, this poor man good. had never spent a day in school. He was oh. just a wonderful man, but a lot of lot of learning disabilities, and <laughs> yeah, it just it was hard for him. Yeah, education level's huge. Yeah. They're like, choose the right answer. And they're like, what? <laughs> I've never done that before. Okay, I'm not going to get into the color vowel chart. I didn't understand it uh, when, because I read the manual. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm not going to get into it. But if your student really struggles with English vowel sounds, I can. Those are, are they're kind of like the words that you sound them. Yeah, it's that English has. 15 or 16 different vowel sounds. So oh, the vowel that's why it's so hard, especially mm -hmm. like yeah, for Spanish know. speakers, they only have six vowel sounds. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. No wonder. Yeah. Okay. And for our teaching remotely people, here's a few resources. So these are just some how to videos. So if your students never use Zoom, um, or they need to download it and not use a video. Um, and some tips to get started. Read through those. These are kind of tips for you and your students. So mm -hmm. um, make sure you know how to use like the whiteboard and the screen share. And yeah, just the basics. Make sure there's not a bunch of background noise. Some ideas of what you can do if you're teaching remotely. I also made this little um, vocab visual thing. So this is kind of nice to share with your student just so um, you, know, you might need to say, you're on mute. <laughs> you need to unmute or look at a different window or your screen and click on something. So. Okay, and then these are useful websites. So remote people and in-person people can use these. Um, I'll go through all of them, just so you know they're here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Okay, now are there any questions? No. Okay. 
And then uh, a lot of people ask, which I always forget to talk about, they're like, when do we finish with our students? Um, so there's not really like a finish, you know, it's different, like citizenship, you know, they are working towards their interview and then they pass their interview and become a citizen and you're finished. But people aren't really ever finished learning a language. So um, most people I would say end because like someone's schedule changes, someone moves. Um, once in a while, people just don't work out for whatever reason. If that happens with you, don't feel bad, just let me know. And I'm fine telling your student that you just need to rematch them. And then some people work with someone for like a year and they just want to try a new student and that's totally fine. So you're not married to your student. <laughs> okay. I actually had a really quick question. I yeah. was wondering if there are like any opportunities for like shadowing or observing classes with like already teaching tutors? Yeah, um, like more of a one-on-one -on -one thing or a class? Either one. Either one. Yeah, we have um, some evening classes. So we have beginner uh, Tuesday and Thursday evening and intermediate Monday and Wednesday evening. And those are all actually taught by volunteers. Um, and they're they're cool with people observing. And then I one of my morning classes, so the Monday Wednesday morning class is hybrid. So half the students are on Zoom and then half are in person. So mm. they either observe in person. And you're also welcome to come to beginner class that's only in person. So that's Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and is it at the library or at the library? Yeah, that's in the morning. Actually, in this room. Which I meant to plug that. Um, trying to think. So, if anyone's available to help with the intermediate class, so in person, I think it's the last last two weeks of August. And one of the volunteers is going to France, so there's <laughs> that, and then we might need some extra help in beginner class. So, if you're free in the mornings and you're wanting to help out in person in a class, just email me. Um, but yeah, Tiara, if you could just send me an email just so I don't forget, because um, people have asked before and I know of a few volunteers who are fine with people observing. Okay, awesome, I'll shoot you an email then, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, anything else? I can't believe I talked to you for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is not how you should teach, by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much, you guys, for joining. Thank you. And again, I'm always here. Um, so if you have questions, and let me know when you're ready to get started with someone. And then once you are working with someone and you know more what they need, just reach out anytime. Sounds good. Thanks for all the resources. It's really helpful. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah right. thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, have a good evening, everyone. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.